wild and windy day here in the low country was also a busy day for local law enforcement. A tractor trailer and two shipping containers blew over on I-526, one falling onto a police car with an officer inside. Our Floriana Boardman brings us the details and tells us how that officer is doing tonight. It all started at 7 a.m. Saturday morning on the Wando Bridge. And there was a sudden strong burst of wind that had actually blown the uh, container off of the truck chassis and blew it into my officer's vehicle. And the officer was actually inside the vehicle at the time. The truck container completely destroyed the police vehicle and fell into the Wando River. Thankfully, the officer inside is safe. And he's a little sore, a little shaken, probably a little in shock. But thankfully, he's OK. He went into the hospital on his own power, got checked out, left the hospital on his own power. So thankfully, he is OK. At the same time, another container from a different truck blew off its chassis on the same roadway, just 10 to 15 feet north of the police vehicle. They were both empty containers, so they weren't weighted down, which I think is probably what played into this. So they were empty container. A strong gust of wind kind of caught them and pulled them off of the truck chassis. Meanwhile, on the Don Holt Bridge, a similar situation. This time, the 18-wheeler blowing over as well. That container stayed on the truck but kind of mangled the truck. It kind of looked like a roller coaster when I saw it, where the kind of one wind, you know, went one way, one end went the other way and mangled that truck. The incidents caused CPD to shut down both the Don Hole and Wando Bridge for hours Saturday morning. So in a matter of probably a few minutes, we had three separate incidents on 526. CPD is working with the Coast Guard to ensure there are no environmental concerns with a shipping container in the Wando River. In all three situations, there are no reported injuries. Working for you, Floriana Boardman, ABC News 4. And it's not just the winds we are dealing with. Warming shelters are reopening in the Charleston area this evening due to an expected drop in temperatures. Aldersgate United Methodist Church, Seacoast Church in West Ashley, and Hibben United Methodist Church will be accepting people from 7 to 9 tonight. Carta will provide free transportation to anyone trying to get to a shelter. Rapid COVID-19 testing is available on site and is required for entry. We are exactly three months away from the primary election and it's full steam ahead for challengers and incumbents alike. Congresswoman Nancy Mace is meeting with potential voters tonight. And there is a town hall in Somerville and our Natalie Spala is there. And Natalie, you had an exclusive sit down conversation with Mace's challenger, Katie Arrington, today. Yeah, that's exactly right. I did. And she has the full support of former President Trump. Now, that's actually support that used to go to Nancy Mace. Now, I did speak with Arrington earlier today. Mace on the receiving end of Trump's fiery comments from this weekend's rally in Florence. And it was one of the many topics Arrington and I discussed today. Thankfully, this June, you have the chance to dump these grandstanding losers and replace them with two rock solid America first champions, Katie Arrington. Where are you? Come on up. Come, come up. Cheers for Arrington matched with booze for Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace reverberated throughout the packed field adjacent to Florence Regional Airport on Saturday. Turned her back on you. Today I sat down with Arrington who's looking to unseat Mace in the first congressional district. So for Nancy Mace, um, she's not a conservative. Arrington said herself she believes there is a divide in the Republican Party. She says it derives from Republicans like Mace, who is currently working to legalize marijuana at the national level. So that's a divide, right? That's not what conservatives are concerned about right now. We're concerned about the economy, we're concerned about our children, and we're concerned about national security. The former president didn't mince words when it came to his former confidant. She's a terrible person. And she has no idea what she's doing. I want to go back to the rally and just kind of quote mm -hmm. Trump here because he used the word crazy and no idea what she's doing. Are those things you necessarily agree with? Or where do you stand there? Well, I would say in the land of political jargon, okay, we'll just say there's political. To go in front of Trump Tower after Trump endorsed me to plead after she has done all of the things she's done against Trump to say how Trump she is was absolutely, it, it, it was sad to watch. He thinks that's crazy. I think it's foolish. I think it's desperate, but he used his words. I, I didn't. Divide also stems from differing views on who's responsible for the January 6th insurrection, while Mace blamed Trump. I happened to be up in Washington working that day. Um, I can tell you what I saw 
And what I saw were, they were not Trump supporters that I saw. And uh, that's all I will say. We need to get all the rhinos out. We need to stand arm in arm. Because you know what happens when we divide as a Republican Party? Socialism runs right down the middle of us and we have got to hold the line. Well, uh, tagging sharks is what they do. All search takes samples from sharks before they release them so they can learn more about these animals and ultimately help protect them. They're on their 43rd ocean research expedition. That expedition, Carolinas. All right, and we have a bunch of new details for you. Currently, they're off the coast of Wilmington as they continue their journey. Check it out there. I think that's mm -hmm. a track of where they are <laughs> before they took off. Sonia Stevens was able to catch up with some of the crew while they were docked in the Charleston Harbor, preparing for three weeks off the coast of the Carolinas. I'm making up uh, leaders to fish with. So what I do is this is what a finished leader will look like. It's tedious work, but co-captain Brett McBride knows how important it is to have the setup just right. This ring is what we attach our buoys to um, when we get the shark up to the side of the boat, and that prevents the shark from being able to go back down. Meanwhile, Christian Purcell, the leaderman, spends the day getting the fishing boat ready. We'll be fishing on, on the center console every day, um, so we'll wake up in the morning every day that we have weather too. Hopefully, we're hoping for better weather than we're seeing right now. It's a windy day for the crew, but the dolphins in the harbor didn't mind at all. Of course, too much wind isn't conducive for good fishing and therefore getting a shark, which at the end of the day is the goal. It's why Purcell joined the team four years ago. Capturing the sharks for the scientists, I think that's, that's an easy one. Um, and that's really goes to seeing it all come together, you know, all of, all of our work, you know, turn the wrenches around here. It's not all shark fishing. So once we actually get to go fishing and actually getting the job done, see it all come together and get one up on the platform. Getting it on the platform is where McBride comes back in. He is the one getting up close and personal with the sharks. I get in there um, with the shark. I redirect the shark in, to get it into the lift, first of all. And there's a technique that I use. I just jump in with the rope in hand, and then I put the rope over a pin, a post that's on the inside of the corral. And then the guys in the boat, at that point, lock up on the, on the leader and start pulling from the boat, which is a lot more powerful than I could do. And it redirects the shark pull point into the lift. And then as it passes me, I pull it off that post and it gets pulled up into the, the far corner of the, the corral, at which point I get in behind it, grab it by the tail, pull it back out into the center of the lift, turn it over onto its, on its one of its sides. Then the scientists get their turn to collect the samples, a process that takes a total of 15 minutes. So in this expedition in particular, we're looking for mature animals, both male and female, so we can take hormone levels and other data points to confirm that they are mating off the Carolinas in this late winter time period. That looks so cool and dangerous <laughs> at the same time. Uh, and this expedition began March 3rd, and Sonia, how has the weather held up for the crew uh, during their exciting journey? Yeah, it has not cooperated at <laughs> oh, all. Boy. At one point, they even headed farther south than they were planning on. They were Ooh, sitting off wow. the Georgia, Florida coast, yeah. um, kind of riding out the rougher weather. But as you guys tracked them earlier, they're now uh, making their way up toward um, the Outer Banks. And they're hoping that the last 10 days of the expedition, the weather will be better. <laughs>